Okay, now we're actually going to talk about Lyapunov's second method, or direct method. And in this case, we need to define a couple of other things that we need to work with. So one of the things we need to define is, first of all, that what's called the trajectory of a system. So S is the system, and X then is the trajectory of the system if it satisfies the state model equation. Okay, so X is a trajectory of the system if it satisfies the state model equation of the system. That's that's basically what we're talking about. So whenever in the future, as as we talk about this, whenever we talk about the trajectory of the system, we're basically assuming that the state model, uh, we're assuming the state model for the system. So the second thing we need to talk about is something called the gradient of a function. So this is a scalar function of uh, a vector variable. The gradient of a scalar function of a vector variable or a system S is given by this expression. So this upside down delta is called the del and it refers to the gradient so this expression means the partial with respect to x of v of x. Okay, So this is a function that's in Rn times minus infinity to infinity. That is, it's, it's in Rn and time. So it's a function of time, and it is in Rn. So remember, the, scalar, the function v is a scalar function. But when I take the derivative, I get a vector function coming out. And the, what basically what's happening is I'm taking the, the partial derivative of v with respect to every element in x. And so each of those partials gives me another element in the vector. So we saw the gradient of a function when we, did, when we went to uh, find a nonlinear uh, a, a state model, a linear state model for a nonlinear system. We took the gradient and evaluated at the equilibrium and we got a state model. And so we're using the gradient again here in terms of this function. All right. For the system with trajectory given this, the derivative of the function along the trajectory of the system is given by this expression. V dot, okay? So the V dot of X of T. So we're, we're looking for this quantity, the derivative of this function along the system trajectory. So we'll see where the system trajectory comes in here in just a minute but basically we want to take the derivative first derivative of v with respect to time not with respect to x with respect to time okay so basically remember v of x of t is a scalar function right it's a fa scalar function and it's a function of time because it's x is a function of time so if we differentiate that we're going to get a scalar function of time Okay, so even though there, within the function there are uh, vectors and matrices and stuff like that, um, we actually this is actually a scalar function of time. As a scalar function of time, we can use something called the chain rule in, in evaluating the derivative. So here's the chain rule for a vec for a scalar value of a vector variable. We basically have the partial derivative of v with respect to x times the partial derivative of x with respect to t. So remember, what we're, we're, we're uh, this is with respect to x, then with x with respect to t. This partial of v with respect to x is the gradient. Okay, and actually, it's the gradient transpose is really what it comes out to be. And then the partial der uh, the derivative of x with respect to t is in fact this function here. So basically, this, this is going to be a vector quantity, this is going to be a vector quantity, and so all of this together is going to be a scalar. And so this is how, we, so when we take the derivative, in general, we don't, we may, if we just have a general vector variable, uh, vector function of a, very, uh, I'm sorry, scalar function of a vector variable, when we take the derivative, we, we'll have this term, but we will not, in general, know what this term is. In our case, because we have a system with a trajectory, we know what that derivative is. It's given by this. Notice that now there are no derivatives with respect to time in this function. There is a derivative with respect to x, and then we have this function, but there's no derivative with respect to time in this function. Okay, there's in, in this side. 
On this side there is, but on this side there is no derivative with respect to time. This is just a function of x, okay, when we're all done. So we now, so we've defined the trajectory of a system. We've talked about the, um, the um, derivative of the function along the trajectory of the system, the time derivative. And so we now define something called a Lyapunov function. So a Lyapunov function, v of x, must satisfy the following properties. v of x must be locally positive definite. Okay. So a positive definite function satisfies this property. And, and then, so any, any positive definite function then is a candidate Lyapunov function. It's just a candidate. Now to actually get voted in, it has to satisfy the next property. The derivative of v along the trajectory of the system is locally negative definite. So locally positive definite v, locally negative definite v dot. Now what is negative definite? Well, a negative definite function is, uh, or rather, the negative of a negative definite function is a positive definite function. Okay, so it's negative definite, positive definite, they're very similar to one another, just opposites, right? So this basically says v of x needs to be positive definite, v dot of x needs to be negative definite. So if, if v satisfies both of these properties, it is called a Lyapunov function. Okay. So if it satisfies this property, it's a candidate Lyapunov function. If it satisfies this property also, then it is an actual Lyapunov function. Okay, so that is the definite, it's kind of complicated, <laughs> kind of complicated definition. Um, that's, so that's what's going on there. Okay, so um, x dot is equal, so here's an example. Okay, here's a candidate Lyapunov function. I take the derivative along the system trajectory. This is what I get. I can show that this is positive definite, and the derivative along this trajectory is negative definite, and so v is a Lyapunov function. Okay, so... Here's what Lyapunov's direct or second method says. If a Lyapunov function exists for a system, the system is stable AS. What is AS? Asymptotically stable. So if I have a system that has a Lyapunov function, the system is asymptotically stable. Okay. So it's not just stable in the sense of Lyapunov, it's actually asymptotically stable. So that is if a Lyapunov function exists. So if the function is positive semi-definite and the derivative along the system trajectory is negative semi-definite, so instead of, po po instead of positive definite and negative definite, I have positive semi-definite and negative semi-definite. What does semi, the semi mean? It, means, it doesn't mean you get run over by a truck. Okay? It means that you, uh, instead of having uh, the function being strictly positive for all non-zero x, it's possible for, for the function to be zero for some non-zero values of x. It can never be negative for a positive definite function, but it could be zero for a, a non-zero value of x. Okay, so negative definite means it, it's always non-positive. Okay, that it could be zero for some non-zero uh, value of x. So if it is if the function is positive semi-definite and the derivative along the trajectory is sem negative semi-definite, then the system is stable in the sense of Lyapunov. So if we don't have strict definiteness, then we only get stable in the sense of Lyapunov. Now, if the system is asymptotically stable and the Lyapunov function is radially, radially unbounded, that is, v of x goes to infinity as x goes to infinity. In other words, if you m make x large, v of x becomes large as well. Then the system is globally asymptotically stable, and that's a gas. Globally asymptotically stable. So, um, now, local, global, what's the deal with that? Well, this notion of stability that's described here is accurate and useful for linear systems, for nonlinear systems, and so it's, it's helpful to understand some of these things. For nonlinear systems, uh, pr being able to prove glo global asymptotic stability is really helpful. Now, it turns out for a linear system, 
if it's asymptotically stable, it's automatically globally asymptotically stable. So that's not a big deal. It's only for nonlinear systems that you have to worry about things like global asymptotic stability. Okay, how do we how do we know that Lyapunov's theorem works? That if we have a positive definite function and a negative definite derivative, how do we know that our system is stable? So one way of doing that is is looking if we think in terms of v of x, v of x is positive for all non-zero x, right? And so we start at some initial condition, we start at some v. v dot is negative definite for all x, which means it's negative as long as x is not zero, which means the slope is constantly going down, okay? The slope is always going down, strictly down, never flattening out, which means the function is always going to zero. So remember that when the only time v is zero for a positive definite function is when x is zero, which means it's converged to the origin, right? And so this function continually go, goes down and it, it must converge to zero. It must converge to zero. So you can go through it and look at convergence theory and show that because as long as it's positive, so it's, it's always above the axis, and the slope is always negative, it's always going to zero, it will converge to zero. So this is the proof. So it's not, not very rigorous, but that's the basic idea. So I have a number of examples that I use in, uh, that are in the, um, my practice problem. So I'm not gonna talk too much about it now. In loose terms, we can think of the Lyapunov theorem as working with energy. So the energy of x of t. We start off with some initial energy, and for a stable system, the stable system will dissipate the energy. The energy will go away, will leave the system. Okay. So basically, v dot is the rate of change of the energy, and so the eventual energy eventually goes away. That's the basic. You start off with some initial energy, and the energy goes away. So, for example, if you think of an RC circuit, just an R and a C with the, the capacitor initially charged, right? So initially charged, there's some initial voltage. The voltage will induce a current through the resistor. And so you'll get this, you'll get this uh, current that goes and, and the uh, cur of course, the current through the resistor dissipates the energy. And so eventually all the, the voltage will go away as well. That's the kind of thing. So um, in, in the practice problems, I have a number of examples of these things. 